Welcome back to K24 this morning. My name is Shiko Kaitani. And of course, as always, we are looking out for you on social media just to get your feedback on our ongoing discussions right here on the show. At K24 TV is how you can reach us. And our WhatsApp number will be at the bottom of the screen. Should you wish to contribute, we will be sampling your feedback in just a moment. But we do have quite the topic for you today. And let's uh, get your thoughts on it. We are still learning about the coronavirus. Uh, research suggested that the virus can spread from people to animals in some situations, if you did know, especially after close contact with a person sick with COVID-19. There have been reports of animals being infected with the virus worldwide. And you may be wondering why we should focus on animals when in fact humans are suffering and we have enough challenges as they are of our own before we can even get to animals. Well, my guests today are here to tell us the importance of caring for community animals and just how it may even do you some good to own one. I want to start off by welcoming Dr. Emily Mudoga, who's here from the World Animal Protection. Karibu sana to the show. Thank you, Shiku. <laughs> Looking lovely, by the way. I love the outfit. The jacket is mwah. Thank you. <laughs> and then joining us via Skype is marketer and pet owner, Renee Kamau. Renee, hi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me here. Okay. So who's that? Who's joining us on the show right next to you? So this is uh, Peanut Kamau, uh, <laughs> his only dog. Um, we've yeah. had him for about three years. Yeah. He's lost. And yeah. <laughs> so Peanut even the, has the a son name. It's Peanut Come Out. Two names. Yes, Peanut Come Out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Renee, we'll be getting to you in just a moment. Uh, but let me start off with you, uh, Dr. Emily. Um, and you know, when we talk about the perception that generally people actually do have, um, you know, when it comes to animals, is that they're not necessarily a priority, especially during now, you know, this this particular time um, of COVID nineteen. Why do you feel it's so important to discuss and actually focus on animals? Um, unfortunately, as we said, people usually don't have a focus with animals, and right now you can understand not only in Kenya but even globally with people out of work and at home the needs for basic food shelter and clothing for the human being has mm. gone up yeah. so now the animal tends to become secondary mm -hmm. but unfortunately us who live with close proximity with animals they have diseases that we can share between humans and animals mm -hmm. and if we do not put those priorities for the animals the way they should we're yeah. opening the do these animals to getting these diseases and when they become um, immune, immune weaker Mm -hmm. or the welfare goes down and they get these diseases, it will eventually jump to the human being. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, that's another added cost on you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Renee, if you can hear me, there's also the perception that owning a pet is just a rich man's problem. Um, people are looking at you and thinking, okay, that's one rich babe right there. <laughs> No, I mean, our pets are companions. Um, they are really good for a lot of uh, things. You know, you can have them for security. Mm -hmm. uh, some are just also just good to have around. They're fun loving. I mean, peanut like really lifts my mood, you know, especially during this COVID period where, you know, you're doing a lot of social distancing. So yeah. it keeps me company, keeps me active. Mm -hmm. So no, it's, it's not a rich man's uh, yeah. thing to have a pet indoors. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, would you describe, uh, you know, being a pet owner as expensive? It's an ex expensive affair. I would say it's, I mean, when you commit to have a pet, mm -hmm. of course it comes with costs. It's almost like having, um, I mean, a child in the house. You know, they have to have a, a, see a vet, yeah. you know, uh, for someone who's young and you travel occasionally. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have, you know, boarding facilities. You can't have them mm -hmm. uh, housed by one of your friends. They get sick. Yeah. You know, they need clear grooming and, and whatnot. So it's, it is a responsibility that you need to be ready to take up financially also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is manageable. It is manageable. Uh, Dr. Emily, um, you've talked about your love for community animals, um, even in your uh, bio. Um, and it's just interesting to see how passionate you are about them. Um, for those who probably may not understand what you mean by community animals, who, who are the community animals? <laughs> uh, basically, in yeah. the livestock or veterinary area, we divide yes. animals into livestock, community, and working animals. Yeah. So now... Community animals, we have like dogs and cats and people who have um, 
birds that mm -hmm. they keep. So mm -hmm. those ones are animals that literally become part of the family. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, then we have the, the livestock, which is your basic donk, your cow, your mm -hmm. bee, mm -hmm. your chicken, your duck. And yeah. then we have the working animals, which is like donkeys and camels. Mm -hmm. Some of these animals actually overlap categories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's how we define yeah. animals in basis. Basically. Right. Because some now have become part of the family <laughs> and they are classified as working the animals. animals. <laughs> but, yeah. I guess you see a lot of that in the West. But when you look at, you know, even through your work and what you do and, you know, when you're advocating for animal, you know, animal welfare, um, what injustices would you say these animals go through? Unfortunately, I say the injustices come in various areas. Mm. Uh, one is an injustice of ignorance where most people don't understand what their animals need. Yeah. In the sense of food, shelter, health care. So it's not that they're depriving those animals knowingly, mm -hmm. but it's from a point of ignorance. Mm. The other area we have is where we see truancy from the point of human beings. Yeah. Where a human being will outrightly go. Mm -hmm. to injure or harm an animal just because they find it is fun yeah or they do not That's have good, yeah. yes yeah. And, and the thing about it is that it's been studied that most of these people who have these traits mm -hmm. it is not hard for them now to actually do use this trait on another human being Absolutely. so yeah. in most countries you'd find people who have this trait especially from the young age to mm -hmm. harm animals they usually watched in their growing up ages mm -hmm. because quite a number of them end up in jail because they end up being People. Very true. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, in fact, a lot uh, my co-hosts make fun mm -hmm. of me about this because you know I tend to watch a lot of true crime. Mm -hmm. But what you would see a lot of psychologists saying is that when they look at a profile of a criminal, um, and they go back as young as when they were toddlers um, growing up, they literally used to punish animals, and people would say, "Oh, they did this. They did this to our cat. They did this to our dog." Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you can you can trace it back and it starts right there yes. on how they used to treat animals when they were younger. Yeah, it's true. Mm. And then the other area of mistreatment is where we have government and yes. laws. Yeah. Because some of our laws, in a, and I, right now Kenya, we're at a place where we have redone our laws, mm -hmm. so they're just about to finally be passed, is where the government does, doesn't have laws to protect Animal. these animals or even regulations for people to understand so there's also a level where the government has a responsibility to help people and to protect the animals that yeah. they have okay mm -hmm. okay uh, i'll engage you about that if there is even a legal framework in just a moment but let me get back to um renee in just a moment uh renee why don't you tell us a little bit about what your routine is like with peanut you know and uh, what it takes to actually manage is it a he or her it's a he. It's a he. Okay, <laughs> what it takes to manage him? Okay. Well, first, as I said before, you know, having a, a pet is a lot of responsibility. You know, yeah. you also have to adjust your lifestyle to accommodate the pet. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, like, basically my routine, especially now that I'm working from home, I have to make sure that I slot in, you know, time slots to make sure he gets exercise, to make sure he gets fed, to make sure he gets you know, uh, entertained, you know, he's very needy because of course he's seeing uh, me in the house now more often because I'm working from home. So he's really wondering, he's like, okay, why are you not paying attention? Mm -hmm. He thinks every day is a weekend. Yeah. So I've had to proactively like make sure I slot him in. When I wake up in the morning, I make sure I walk him, I make sure he's fed, then I can start my day. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work, but also he keeps me up with because now I get to run with him in the morning. Yeah. So before when I was like this, should exercise, he's my companion, you know, cheering me on. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, when there was a lot of social distancing, he got a bit moody because, you know, he was not seeing people, he was not going outside. Yeah. And um, with time, we've actually just had to realize that we can't lock ourselves inside the house. We have to take him outside because we live in an apartment. Mm -hmm. um, we have to make sure he also, you know, remembers how to socialize with people because, you know, the first two months of COVID, he was not seeing anybody besides myself right. and my sister. Mm. And so when we occasionally have a guest, he would really bark, but now we're trying to make sure at least we responsibly get him to, you know, see the outside and interact with people. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. the way you describe peanut is a way that a lot of people would never look at or view an animal or, or their pet, so to speak. It's almost as if peanut has a personality. Um, would you <laughs> say that p pets do have their own personalities? They are never usually the same? Oh, yes. No, no pet is the same. He has his personality. Yeah. He has his moods. Um, you know, I know when he's, in a, he's, he's happy. I know when he's sad. He also feeds off our energy a lot. Yeah. So 
everyone's pet is, is, is very different in their own way, you know. Mm -hmm. I actually have got to understand him in such a way that, you know, when we're walking and um, we come across another dog, yeah. I know whether he's aggressive or whether he's going to be friendly. Even mm -hmm. when people approach him, I can really tell his, his yeah. behaviors. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right, that's interesting. You, you know him so well. Um, uh, yeah. When it comes to animals, uh, Dr. En Emily, um, uh, would you also describe some of these attachments to your pets or to animals unhealthy in, in, in a way? Um, and what would you describe as an unhealthy relationship um, you know, with your pet as an owner? Um, there are times when people, as you say, like in, in Europe where somebody is living, they're single. Yeah. Or they're a couple and they don't want to have children mm -hmm. and the animal becomes their pet. Yeah. It comes to a point where they go over the border, where mm -hmm. they forget this is an animal. Mm -hmm. It has its own psychological needs. Yeah. So now they tend to do what you call anthropomorphism. Okay. Where we start thinking that the animal is like us, a human being. Mm. So put, we put our human attitudes, our human emotions, our human needs into the animal. Mm -hmm. And many a times, these are times in some animals, it causes psychological effects. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh -huh. and, and also at times I said, it depends on your training. Because she said she had to train peanuts. Mm -hmm. We have some places where people have become so close to their animals that those animals have become overprotective mm -hmm. of their human being and no other person can come close near, to them, yeah. near them and mm -hmm. then they have a very bad attitude to other dogs because even if you have dogs dogs are supposed to be trained to interact yeah so the dog almost has a human-like mentality mm -hmm. that when it comes to other dogs mm -hmm. it will you know who are these what are these and it will not have that social interaction it's supposed to have with other dogs mm -hmm. so we human beings have to be very careful that we do not go mm -hmm. over that yeah that border yeah yes okay uh renee um are you aware of these boundaries that dr emily is talking about that you know you don't cross to the other side where now your attachment to peanuts doesn't become you know unhealthy so to speak in quotes i mean peanuts even has an instagram page like he's <laughs> <laughs> you have taken the time to post his activities and talk about him in in the third person you know it's like <laughs> hey I'm, I'm a marketer so i have to commercialize everything in my life okay yeah um i am actually very aware about you know um you know uh handling Those boundaries, yeah. and treating him like a human being yeah because also there's the other angle that you look at it that also if he thinks he's on the same level with you he'll also manhandle you you know you have to also showcase that you're the leader of the pack we are different i'm a human yeah you're a dog they speak different and we really make that clear in terms of how we handle him like for example when we're eating dinner yeah. or having lunch we don't eat with him he has his eating time separate mm. when the humans are eating we do our things very separate and we're very clear that he can't also do certain things in the house he has yeah. to behave he's the dog yeah. in the house yeah I mean, we see yeah. situations whereby, especially in the West, where people treat animals, like you said, um, just like human beings. I mean, you will have your pet <laughs> pig sleeping in your bed, you know, in your bathtub. Uh, we see them, you know, really having a difficult time letting go of some of these animals should they pass or if they are taken away. Um, Dr. Emily, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of this behavior that we see? I mean, is this now what we're talking about just complete lack of awareness of these boundaries um yes mm. you'd be surprised that human beings have a need for love yeah and animals give you that love a hundred percent even a cat that loves you according to its ideas and like a dog that does it wholeheartedly and because of that need for us human beings as if you're as a, especially if you're a human being who doesn't have friends yeah or in a situation where like in europe where people uh, live singularly not like mm. in Africa you have community yeah when that animal gives you that uncharted love mm -hmm. you take it and then unfortunately you make that animal mm -hmm. the satisfier of your emotion and your emotional needs right. so these things come into place where the animal ends up sleeping in your bed mm -hmm. washed taking a bath with you yeah eating on the same plate which is totally wrong both mm -hmm. psychologically mm -hmm. for you and the animal but also health wise in very many areas yeah and you see what we don't understand is animals 
have their own instincts on how their behavior has to be. Mm -hmm. So that w w wraps things up. So now if a person, let's say the person dies before the human, right. such an animal being given up for adoption into another home and into another setting where the people are going to treat it the way it is as an animal, mm -hmm. many a times they can't fit into these settings. Right. They get depressed mm -hmm. or they start um, misbehaving. Mm -hmm. And many of them at times, if they cannot be retrained, they unfortunately end up having to put down. So yes. it causes a total negative reaction yeah at the end of the day for both the animal and the person and if that animal dies before the person mm -hmm. many people go into a state of depression and many of them it's very hard to come out and when they get a new animal which has not been adapted to the way that animal of yours has been adapted because mm -hmm. it's new again mm -hmm. you kind of end up thinking that animal is wrong yeah. and mistreating it and sending it back yeah but you don't realize that what you caused mm -hmm. earlier on <laughs> may not never be replicated yeah. or it is actually mm -hmm. caused a mm -hmm. negative impact on your psychology all right okay um let's uh give our audiences uh the chance to uh or other audience get, you know contribute to this particular discussion um uh, of course we still do have the question of the day we believe it's been posted up on social media but we want to share that with you as well on our screens and we ask uh, do animals have any you know or are they beneficial to the emotional well-being of humans uh do you believe that animals are beneficial to the emotional well-being of humans uh, and we ask you to send your feedback through our WhatsApp line. We will be taking a look at your feedback if there is any um, as we go along. Um, but speaking about the emotional benefits of having an animal, because someone could be also toying with the idea, do I need to get a pet? How is it going to help me having a pet? Uh, Dr. Emily, um, what would you say are the benefits? The benefits of having a pet is that unlike human beings where, Chiku, I love you, but when I have a bad mood or if you have a bad mood, I can decide I'm not liking you and being rough on you. Yeah. Animals somehow manage to break that barrier that even when you're upset and you're depressed, mm -hmm. they will always be there and they'll push on until your mood changes. We have seen that dogs are used as emotional dogs for people who have had accidents, yeah. um, soldiers who have come from war, mm -hmm. kids who are autistic mm -hmm. and cannot understand human emotions and learnings. Yeah. Dogs are trained to, because they have the patience to bridge that gap and help these autistic children mm -hmm. come into the place where mm -hmm. they're supposed to be. So psychologically yeah. for a person, dogs have a calming effect yeah. and they have an encouraging effect, even cats. So mm -hmm. that's why many a times in cases where people have emotional needs, right. they're encouraged to have um, pets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Renee, why, why do you think that there is such a low percentage of animal or pet owners, especially in, in this country, in Kenya, or in even Africa at large? Well, I think it comes down to a lot of, you know, it comes down to how we've been brought up. Mm. Most people uh, in, in you know, the African society, when they think about, you know, dogs and cats, they, they think about dogs as just, you know, security dogs. They don't think about it as a companion, something that you need to spend a lot of time with. Yeah. If you actually see most people's houses, you know, they, they lock up their dog in a kennel. They don't socialize it. It, it gets out at night. Mm. Cats. Usually you'll find, um, you know, a cat just adopts it itself. It just gets into a homestead, hangs around, and they don't really pay a lot of attention to it. So it's a lot of, it has a lot to do with our upbringing, you know, yeah. like, especially like when sometimes people visit me and they're like, oh my God, you have a dog in the house. I'm like, yes. And it's great. <laughs> no, it's, it knows how to, to ask to go to the bathroom. It's, it's very socialized and they can't believe that because they, they only think about dogs as, you know, security yeah. animals. In fact, when I'm walking the dog sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you see people just trying to veer off because they are afraid. Yeah. Because they relate dog, security, vicious. Mm -hmm. Cat, it's a stray. It's a mm -hmm. nuisance. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot to do with our upbringing. Yeah. Um, do you get such remarks like, okay, peanut is here to replace a void in your life. Um, I don't know if you're married or if you have kids, <laughs> uh, but do some people feel like, okay, you know, this closeness that you have with peanut is probably trying to fill a void. I know someone who has about 10 to 15 cats in their home. And honestly, people would be like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> well, a lot of people... You know, especially like my aunts, you know, sometimes when I go for uh, family functions, we carry peanut along. Yeah. And they're like, I think it's time for you to get a child. You know, they, they keep giving those uh, hints and whatnot. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable. I'll, you know, things will happen in their due time. Yeah. I, I 
but subconsciously of course i just say i hope i don't grow old that i'm in my 80s or 90s and i have like 10 dogs and three cats <laughs> hope it will never happen to me but yeah. yes people actually judge you as a young single girl with a dog yeah and they're like you know you need to get a man but i mean that's not what's what why i have peanuts you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah not feeling a void okay no, it's not feeling any void of a child or a man in my life no okay <laughs> <laughs> you know when you look at the um the role of animals in raising children you mm -hmm. kind of um will be open to the idea of adopting a pet uh dr emily because there's a way you can be able to teach children through owning a pet uh, and so let's talk about in your opinion mm. what you think would be beneficial to a child's upbringing by having a, a pet, pet in the mm. home uh, before i go that i'd like to backtrack on what we yeah. talked about pets is yeah. that actually in africa pet ownership is very high mm -hmm. if you go to the rural areas yeah. all boys have a dog and you'd notice in the homestead the watchdog yeah. and the dog of the children is mm -hmm. their 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 attitudes are different because the child's dog is actually a pet. Mm -hmm. Anyway, in some of those rural areas, when if the dog is a watchman, it is so close to the head of the house. Right. So when we and define it's only him who can handle yes, that dog, and, yes. and they have this attachment. So yes. I think f when it comes to Africa, it's what we culturally define as a pet. Mm -hmm. If we put the Western idea of what cultural definition of what a pet, then we'll say we do not have. Pets, pets in Africa. Right. But if we sit down and see the social cultural norms with dogs and mm -hmm. cats up country, actually, it may be a working dog, but many a times it is actually a pet. Wow. By the way, so it's, yeah. it's how we, we, we put it, things. it's where our cultural norms between mm -hmm. what we have in Africa and the mm -hmm. West mm -hmm. uh, clash and how the definitions are. Mm -hmm. As for dogs, many people, it's encouraged whether it's a dog or a cat to have yeah. because children need to learn responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Yes. And at times, your parents are not always there. And if a child wants a dog and they're given their dog and they're trained that, okay, you have to wake up in the morning, take the dog out. If it's an apartment, take it out so it can go to the toilet. Mm -hmm. Bring it back. Wash its dishes. Yeah. Give it food. Mm -hmm. Yes, every two days, brush the dog if it's a long-haired dog. Yeah. Every evening, make sure it has its food, it has its run. Make yeah. sure it is washed once a week and mm -hmm. those are the kids responsibilities it actually tra trains a kid responsibility mm -hmm. and also for human beings who don't understand that empathy is a learned trait right so when we s look at an adult and they're not empath empathetic or mm -hmm. there are some of these mm -hmm. emotions that they don't hold yeah. many of us reject and wonder what's wrong with this human being yeah. but we don't understand those are traits that you learn from your childhood mm -hmm. they just don't come automatic and animals pets whether it's a cat or a dog or a bird helps children develop those psychological and empath empathetic traits that right. we have later on in adulthood okay all right so uh let's hold that thought because when we get back from our short commercial break i will continue uh to be engaging uh, dr emily on the same as to why perhaps especially if you're raising a child why it could be beneficial for you to have that pet right in your household and of course renee kamau is going to be telling us all about how she um you know goes about her schedule with peanut kamau <laughs> So we'll be talking to them in just a moment. But uh, for now, keep talking to us through our social media platforms at K24 TV yet again. And through that WhatsApp number that's at the bottom of your screen. We're asking you if at all animals really do contribute to our emotional well-being. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Talk to us. We'll be back in just a moment.